Um, oh look, uh, they're both satisfying. There's no doubt. I mean, every win we've had this year has been satisfying. It's every week we play footy to win, and every time you get a win, you really do enjoy it. I suppose it's you know Sydney Collingwood, us, but back to back, it's been a pretty nice fortnight. You just dominated them. Is that what you're so proud of? I was proud of the boys, the way they play, you know, the, the way they play tough, hard footy. And, you know, we've, we've said it before and we'll say it again. We, we defend hard first and then we play, we play brave off that and that's the way we want to play footy. Was that as good as you've been defensively this year? I mean, they kicked two goals early and then basically the two goals late in between that. They booted three goals the rest of the day. Yeah, look, we were very good. We've had a, um, you know, a really solid month defensively, I think. And all year we've, we've been... Pretty good all year defensively. I said, that, you know, it's no, the numbers stack up okay for us defensively, and uh, you know, but again, I think we've we've actually been able to tighten that up a little bit more since the the break. The break was good for us, and it's put us in a position now where the boys have been working really hard defensively. Oh, I love their effort. I mean, I just love their effort. I love the way they turn up to uh, you know to, to work. You know, and they want to get better. And from the I said to Richo and, and to the boys after the game. Uh, from the day we got here, we, I don't think we quite realised the, the, um, the ability of the group to want, want to play tough. You know, and uh, you know, went through some horrible times last year, and uh, you know, we've come in and they've been in a really, uh, they've been in a really good space, but they've been in a really demanding space of each other, and we've been demanding of them, and they've, you know, so far they've got results that they deserve, no doubt. Yeah, I think I think I've probably known that about them already. As I said, I said last week, from NAB Cup on, we've been going. You know, we've been we've been hard and we've been trying to play tough footy all the way through. We've had some lapses. We had a five week lapse that we didn't like to have. But you know, we as I said, it, bar the one quarter in that period of time, I was still proud of the way they were playing. Now, the biggest criticism of the in the past is that midfield didn't defend. How have you changed that? Um, I've told my midfielders if they don't defend, they don't play. And I don't think I've, that's what I've said, am I? Yeah. Yep. And uh, he's true to his words, so you've got to do it. How much does that mean to the playing group? Uh, you know, like Ken said, it's extremely satisfying. We haven't beaten Collingwood since 2007, I think. So, um, and to, you know, to come off the back of a great win last week, um, you know, it's, it, it brings a lot of trust within the group and um, and everything we're doing. So, boys are obviously pretty pumped and just uh, looking forward to playing each week. And to, to back up. Shock win against Sydney. Does that make it even more special that you know you're not sort of one hit wonder beating one of those top sides? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, you know the reason why people are probably still tipping against us, I suppose, is because we've lacked that consistency in the in the last few years. So um, to be able to have two really really great performances against top quality sides is Fantastic for our group, and um, you know we'll keep building on that confidence and that momentum over the next few weeks. You're going to shut down the running power, obviously, the midfield, but also Harry O'Brien and Pete Shaw getting back. How significant was that in your win? Oh, super significant. Um, I think you know, Angus Monfrey did a super job on, on Heath Shaw, um, you know, nullifying his run off half back. We know that you know, when Shaw and O'Brien get that run off at half back, that they're very hard team to stop. So. Um, you know, Angus did a great job on Shaw and Kane again another week, another job done for Kane on, on Harry O'Brien. So we can't ask much more of those two guys and the way they played tonight. Can you feel like you've set up an opportunity for September? Should you take it now? Um, look, I won't hide. I said to the boys inside, I said, uh, we will get what we deserve. And that's, that's, I'm going to tell you that again today. We will get and we'll end up where we deserve to end up. Uh, we've put ourselves in a position now that we've just got to keep turning up and taking care of next week's game and see what happens from there. But we are on a journey still. You know, for, for all the Port fans who think that we've you know, won these couple of games in a row going home tonight, be proud of the boys, be really pumped for what they've been able to do, but understand it's still a journey. And I'm not trying to hose that down in any way other than to say this is a young team still with lots to learn. So on that journey, what should they, what's, what's realistic for them then on that journey to get into September this year? Play well next week. Sorry, that's what I'll give you. I think play well next week, turn up to training this week, train well, prepare well. What we've been able to do is, through, through this, we've been able to, to get some great lessons. You know, last week we had two players pull out, morning of the game and just before the game. Yesterday the boys didn't train well. 
You know, we talked about that as a group. We, we, were, we owned up to that, that we didn't train well yesterday. So to come to work today and then be able to play the way we did was another thing that they've been able to learn. So those challenges keep coming. Next week's another enormous challenge for us. I mean, we go to play Essendon over in Melbourne and what a great opportunity for us to go there and give ourselves another great test. Yeah, I've been in the game a long time. It's taken me a long time to be here, so it's, uh, you, you do know, and very valuable lesson I learned not that long ago is that if you're prepared to look at next week and only stay in that moment, you'll be okay. Can you talk about close on Friday? With, uh, how much has the responsibility on Bobby increased once uh, being reinforced? Bobby uh, would say that he, he, needed, uh, he needed a lot of support from his teammates today, and he played really, really strong footy himself in contests that he had to win. But without the support of his teammates, Bobby would be the first to say it would have made it a lot more difficult. We, I thought we defended Collingwood super well as a team. And you had Rob admitted on Friday and maybe Rob Bryce will give you Jackson Yeah, he was good. You know, we, we knew his touch was probably going to be... He's not a first touch player, you know, he's not, not straight into the game. That's why we wanted to play him. You know, you need to play at this level and, and, and this, this uh, you know, the intensity of, of AFL football to get better quickly. So that will do him the world of good. We've been, Jasper and him, we've been lucky that we've been able to bring them back into the side and took a little bit of a risk, but both have come through okay. That huge crunching tackle on, on Elliot sort of set, set the standard aggressively? Yeah, I said that's what we brought him into the side. We know he's, he's aggressive, he's, you know, he's a fierce big competitor at 197 and, and he likes, he, one, he likes hurting people and he likes helping his team. Yeah, we've, uh, we've, we've flogged that young fellow, I reckon, in his first year of AFL football, and we're mindful of that, and you know, we knew we were in good form, we had Travis coming back in. We've been looking for perhaps an opportunity to give him a little bit of time off, albeit it was only one quarter, it's probably good. Like, like Robbie Grady when he had the sub vest on, he probably told us today that he doesn't like being sub too often. I mean, Andrew Moore has been in down the side, I know, but when he, he's come on in recent weeks, he's made a real impact, and, and certainly in the clearance, he's one of your better clearance players. How significant has his strides been? Yeah, he's been really, really, uh, really good. He's had to do it for a period of time at Sandville, and, uh, and we deliberately done that to him, to a bit, to you know, almost make him want to stay and be a part of it. And uh, you know, he had to fight really hard. And he got his, he got his lucky break, played well, and then he's played back that up again today. I'd like to think Maury now will be, a, you know, a member of our side for a long period of time. But he'll have to work hard to keep that. And as you talk about trusting your teammates before, how much does belief and confidence make you a better team? And like, can you quantify it at all? Like. Oh yeah, it's it's probably hard to put a limitation on it, I suppose, when um, when we've got enormous belief in the coaching staff and each other as players and um, and our game plan. Um, you know, and we keep running, we keep doing you know the things that we should be doing to win games of football. Um, you know, it's it's hard to tell you know how much uh, you know momentum and confidence can actually be stopped. But um, yeah, we, we've shown that uh, if we play the, the way we want to play and we build that trust amongst the playing group, that we can get good results. Are you thinking that taking uh, Chad Wingard is sort of taking that hard tag off you for at least a week? <coughs> yeah, it was nice actually. It was real nice. Um, yeah, I guess that's what happens when uh, you know when you get a few good players that, that start playing well together. Um, you know, Chad's obviously had a super year and you know it takes the pressure off, off Bokey obviously and, and myself a little bit too. So we'll keep sharing the workload and keep working together as a team and, uh, and we'll keep getting good results. Ken, has there been a one or two open clearer for you then? Yeah. Yeah, it's clearer because we've uh, we've got one in good form. You know, we've had Red and go uh, down with injury. We, we, we were really bullish on Redo and and Renufi's uh, taking. You know, he's had a bit of time now back in the sample, so we haven't really had the choice for the last two or three weeks. I think once we get to that, that doesn't mean we won't play two ruckman at some point because we'll make decisions based on the opposition and you know we'll pick the side to suit. Obviously, with Trengove coming back in and Homs playing the way he's played down back, that allows us another little bit of flexibility there. Yeah, it's disappointing. He's, he's got a hamstring injury, and look, Dom's been significant for us. Even though he's you know, again got hurt again today, but when he's coming, he's give us a lift. I mean, we've seen him last week. Dom, Dom is the bit of a heartbeat of this footy club. He got kicked in the head last week and just kept playing. And uh, you know, this week he's hurt himself again. I know what he'll do though. I do know Dom will go and rehab really hard, really well, and he'll get himself ready to come back in. And he'll be back in our team when he's, he's fit and ready to go because we love having him in the side. But he's had some challenges this year. Or as I said, he's, he's had interruptions from just before Christmas, and he's you know he's paid a bit of a price. But we now know that. Once we get through this season, we just get him fit again. He'll be a valuable member still going forward, and he'll add to us at this stage. Given the team's going to be 
haven't spoken about it in a way they haven't been for probably five years. What's your advice going to be to um, Look, I think I'd probably say the same thing. But I, I've never probably got ahead of it all. I've never worried about that sort of stuff too much. And I'm, I said last week, I'm really demanding on the group. You know, I, we walked in last Monday and I clipped them over something that wasn't footy related and we'd just beaten Sydney. So we'll be good as a group, I reckon, because I'm that way. The players are that hard on each other. It's not, it can't just be coach driven or coaches driven. It, it has to be a buy in from players. And we have buy in. There's no doubt we have buy in from our, our young leadership group. And uh, they, they certainly lead the way really well on game day and through the week. But we have a group and a football club that's, you know, in a, just want to be really proud of what we do. You know, and that turns up every week. Specifically, how much you guys are fed up? I know you're, you're proving that you are fed up about the past five years. Uh, pretty much. <clears throat> pretty much. Um, you know, I think that's why Bokey was such a great choice as captain. Um, not only did he, he lead the way so well on field over the last you know, two or three years, but um, he was sick to death of losing. And the way he's trained, the way he's worked so hard in the gym, um, set really high standards for us as a playing group. and. And us as a leadership group have had to uphold those standards and we've been more than happy to do that and follow his lead and you know, we've all been quite sick of losing the last few years and uh, I'm glad you know, things are finally changing. Thanks guys. Any, any other interest? Uh, no. Logan. Oh, Logan. Logan's got a, a cork calf which we think is going to be okay. And Logan's ankle just Yeah, just, he went back on the ground.